online. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Digital Foundry Direct and a momentous occasion is upon us. <laughs> it has been revealed that Crisis, the original Crisis, uh, is coming. It's coming back. It's being remastered. It's coming to PC, uh, to the current gen consoles and even the Switch. It's an announcement that is frankly astonishing. And joining me to talk about it, the man with the Crisis Shrine, <laughs> Alex Battaglia. I, uh, I'm so <laughs> excited and also a little nervous. I think that's like all good things in life and all those years of prayer have, have come to fruition. So <laughs> it's going to be great. Let's talk. Well, you know, Alex, I'm not sure that there is a God, but there is a prophet. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it wouldn't be a crisis uh, conversation without the inclusion of Mr. John Linneman, who joins us from Frankfurt. That was an amazing joke there, Rich. I got to say, I, I'm that I came out of nowhere, but I love it. I don't. Have you been sitting on that all morning? I, I have been pondering it overnight. <laughs> so obviously, look, this is amazing news. It is a game that is fundamentally one of our favorites mm -hmm. and uh, we've been covering it for years. We're still covering it even now. We can't stop talking about Crisis. And we've had hints for some time that there was something in the works. So Alex, why don't you talk us through the timeline there? Yeah, so, um, well, I guess the original timeline starting is when Crisis was ported to CryEngine 3 and then to Xbox 360 and PS3, which was the, the original Crisis, which was running on CryEngine 2 in 2007, was very single threaded, so it would only score um, scale linearly with like clock speed of your processor and how many inst instructions per cycle it could do. So the CryEngine 3 version of that made the engine and the game much more multi-threaded, so it could run on something like the Xbox 360 or PS3. It still ran rather poorly there, I would argue, uh, but it was a something that would not be capable under CryEngine 2. So that version of the game existed in the background for a long time mm -hmm. and was never ported to PC. Um, and then they've kind of, over the years, been showing off environments that look like the original uh, uh, island from Crisis, like this you know, tropical jun jungle island. There was a, um, a map pack for Crisis 3, which uh, redid one of the island levels from the original Crisis and updated the, uh, the assets for that. And then they've also, uh, over time, uh, in a CryEngine 5 trailer, which is the current version of CryEngine, um, they showed off an environment which was basically the first level uh, of Crisis. Uh, slightly different in terms of its layout, but the exact same kind of crescent bay. And that was utilizing, obviously, the latest CryEngine 5 features, uh, which are way advanced over uh, Crisis 1s and also much more performant, like it's a very multi-threaded engine now. Oh yeah. And also supports things like, I think in the back end it supports things like Vulkan and DirectX 12. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot that's happened in the years since then, and based upon what they've said in this press release, it seems to be using that version of the engine. Yeah, we also had those teases from uh, the Crisis Twitter account, which have been dormant since 2016. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then we had the leak on the website where they accidentally set the cookies policy live ahead mm -hmm. of time, and people could access basically all, all of the information. And then the teaser trailer leaked. <laughs> um, and then I think they just sort of conceded defeat and just announced it last night. <laughs> which is which is just funny. Uh, I've tried contacting Crytek. I have had zero response uh, from them. So you know they're they're keeping things on the down low at the moment. Uh, so John, let, let's talk about the announcement itself and and what we've got to to chew over there. What sort of catching your eye there? So I guess the surprising thing, in a way, is that they've announced such a range of platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously it's coming to PC, but also current generation consoles, including Nintendo Switch. And so we've actually seen CryEngine on the Switch with, uh, I think they ported Warface over mm -hmm. to Switch. And if you've seen it in action, it actually looks and runs surprisingly well, which suggest considering, you know, the Switch is kind of, uh, it's more comparable to a last generation console, I think we can agree. Mm -hmm. And it seems to exhibit smoother performance uh, and sort of higher quality rendering features than any of the last gen CryEngine games on PS3 or 360. Mm -hmm. So at least it does seem promising, but I guess I'm curious to see like what is the target for this game, basically, in the sense that 
they do sort of venture some high-end features such as ray tracing which we'll discuss but they sort of include this in the bubble around all the console versions so it makes you think that perhaps we're not going to have uh, another can it run crisis moment yeah. uh, as this is clearly seems to be a version that's targeting uh, consoles first with support for the PC as well but you know maybe there's potential that there actually will one push out extra PC features and two maybe update the game to support PS5 and Xbox Series X closer to launch mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to say on that front but either way I guess it's interesting that Saber Interactive is involved uh, you know, and they um, they were actually involved in the Master Chief Collection yeah. with Microsoft. They they were the developers of Wheel Rock and Time Shift back in the early 2000s, and they also worked on <laughs> Shaq Fu and Legend Reborn. So you got the top tier. No, I, <laughs> they've done good. They've done good work. I want to say they also worked on Quake Champions and did the rendering engine aspect of that. Like they updated in Tech Five uh, to have like all the cool features that had for that, if I recall too. So they, they have good graphical chops, you know? Like, they know what they're doing. And also, um, they were involved, I think, with The Witcher 3 Complete Edition on Switch, right? That's right, yes. Which I was kind of, I was wondering when that would actually enter the conversation. Because uh, <laughs> it is kind of slightly more relevant than Shaq Fu. That's a great example of a super high-end game for this generation running on a portable machine. So, yeah, I guess our discussion kind of varies from the very high-end PC down to the Switch. So where do you guys want to start on that sense? Let's start with the PCs because you mentioned that it could, obviously, is this a moment where can it run Crisis? Where will they pad out the game with so such ridiculously high-end features that your top-end PC will struggle to run it? And I think the answer is kind of yes a little bit. Um, because one, CryEngine, ever since, like I want to say a little bit after 2013, has had sparse voxel global illumination as part of the engine. Smoggy. Uh, Smoggy, which, you know, was cut out of Unreal Engine 4 and because it couldn't run on current gen consoles, essentially. And it's also something that's very hard to scale. It doesn't work really well with a lot of, like, really dynamic scenes where there's a lot of things moving. So, like, static geometry is usually the best thing for it. Um, CryEngine kept that feature, though. But it has, in the games that have come out on CryEngine since it's had that feature, really been only available as an option on PC. Like uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance has, has it only enabled on PC. Um, uh, Hunt uh, Showdown has it really only enabled on PC. For console versions of CryEngine 5, as it's called, or the, the latest version of CryEngine, they turn on what is essentially like a voxelized ambient occlusion. For the console versions so it still gets that like overall similar look but without the bounce lighting and out without the directionality so it could have a feature like that exclusively to pc so it would still look similar enough on consoles that the game doesn't look completely different but the pc version would look decidedly better with all the bounce lighting being kept in another feature on top of that that it will definitely have since it's mentioned in the press briefer is uh, CryEngine's form of API agnostic ray tracing, yes. which is a software solution to ray tracing, and it kind of inslots or inserts geometry, like skinned geometry, into the voxel global illumination pipeline and then ray traces it. So you get things like ray traced reflections of, of like moving objects and things like that, something which Spogey can't really do that well. Um, that was pretty expensive though on PC and was not using hardware acceleration. Uh, we, we can throw up some of the benchmarks right now. As you can see, uh, it can run on higher end hardware, but it has a very you know mixed cost depending upon which GPU architecture you're, you're using. Like it ran pretty great on Turing, okay on RDNA and okay on Pascal, but GCN was struggling pretty hard on it. I don't know if that can make it to consoles at all because of that baseline cost. I'm kind of feeling like that's a feature that could be reserved for next generation consoles, Ooh, in fact. Yes. If they were to update the game, it'd be a perfect chance to do that. And I also feel like if they're going to keep that feature on PC, it doesn't make sense to keep it API agnostic only anymore. Uh, in their initial interview after they announced it uh, of GDC last year, they had an interview with um, the lead programmer who's been at CryEngine for so long, uh, Vlad, whose last name I'm forgetting right now, um, where he was describing that if they were to port it over to DXR or ray traced acceleration, uh, like, you know, with hardware, it would run four times faster almost. Um, so I feel like that is something that they should not leave on the table. 
for the for the end game you know like they should port it over leave the api agnostic version in for people who can't run it you know like under dxr uh, but then also make it run under dxr so people with things like rtx 2080s or rdna2 gpus can run the game really really well you know now it's interesting if you look at that small teaser that they showed yeah uh you, you can actually see sort of reflections in the water yeah and those actually yeah. do appear to be using their ray tracing solution as a, they're completely devoid of the ssr artifacts that you would otherwise see yeah it's it's really cool looking in that scene and also i think in nomad's visor when he turns around you can actually see the branches above him uh like not, it's not just like a static reflection so it, it is seems to be in this teaser trailer already and I guess the question is this teaser trailer representative of what we should expect for how the game will look? Um, I would hope so, because teasing a crisis game with uh, something as how it doesn't actually look would be not a very good idea. Especially considering the old real time all the time uh, phrase that they yeah, used right? in the past. So. But how this will run on consoles and what it will look like in comparison? or what it will look like on Switch is also a whole other question. You look at it though, I mean, if you look at the feature set and capabilities of CryEngine in its current iteration, it seems extremely scalable. Like there's a lot of areas where you can make obvious cutbacks to make this run on different sets of machines with different capabilities. So I expect that it will actually look and run fairly well on Switch, but it's almost certainly going to be lacking some of the high-end features. And that's fine. I mean, mm -hmm. just having Crisis on a portable machine at all, and likely in a superior form to the PlayStation 3 360 version, that's extremely appealing. I mean, that's that's neat. I, I want to see that. A great example of that capability was when uh, Shavat Yearly came on stage for some NVIDIA press conference a while back. I forget it was. And showed off uh, a version of the Skylines level from Crisis 2 running in Crisis 3's art and engine updated with PBR textures and was running on uh, an NVIDIA Shield at that point in oh, time. Oh, wow. So there is already... Yeah, I saw it. I was there. Yeah, yeah, you were there, Rich, and you can talk about that, you know? Well, it was very low frame rate, very low resolution, but it, it was yeah. working. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't think they ever took the project any further than that. But I would say that there's a lot of uh, hope for the Switch version because... Um, well, we have a working last-gen version of Crisis, which isn't that bad. It does have some performance issues. I mean, they cut they cut back in areas like the the foliage draw distance is massively scaled back. Yeah, and the amount of it. Yeah, I mean, I think they eliminated Palm from that version, if I recall. Yeah. You know, a lot of the things that you would expect them to cut, they did cut. And even then, the frame rate was quite low, especially on PlayStation 3, where it really struggled. Yeah. But it also reminded me that didn't Crytek have a working Wii U build of Crisis 3 at some point? And that actually <laughs> never happened. That would have been interesting. They had to because Sonic Boom runs on the Wii U, John. Oh, jeez. You know? that, that, that. <laughs> isn't that like extremely unperformant? It, it's yeah, terrible. It's but again, I don't, you know, <laughs> the thing is, though, is when you look at what Crytek has delivered on their different console platforms in the past, it's usually quite impressive. But third-party mm -hmm. attempts at CryEngine have been less so. Yeah. Although there is like, you know, there is some, there's been a number of CryEngine games this generation, but not a ton. Yeah. Uh, and I actually think, um, what was that one? Uh, the- Evolve? No, it was oh. the the one with North Korea taking over the world. Oh, Homefront. Oh yeah, Homefront, the revolution. That was Crytek who did that. Yeah, initially. Yeah, that launched in a very bad state. But if you look at it in its current build across all platforms, and especially with like the Xbox One yeah. X patch, they actually it runs extremely well. It looks great. Yeah, and that was a previous generation of CryEngine. It's also now it looks differently. It's probably much more robust in terms of its like how it actually scales. Uh, I also think another thing to point out is how Rise on the original Xbox One, which has kind of been a not that great of a performer in a lot of games it ran rise rather okay for how rise looked you know like 900p uh 30 fps for a lot of it dipping down obviously lower and like some of like the scorpion shooting sequences and things like that um but that the fact that the xbox one could run a game that looked like that with that kind of asset quality at launch uh, is really at launch is really good uh, but the only thing that makes me worry about kind of crisis it, even if it became more multi-threaded 
there's a lot of AI on these levels. Yes. And there's a lot going on in the background, even when you're not doing things. Um, like some of the larger levels make me worried. That's what destroyed the previous console version. Yeah. If you played the game <laughs> stealthily, it actually ran at a reasonably sta stable frame rate most of the time. But the second you like basically annoy the hive and all the enemies come out to play, and you start, you know, popping off rounds left and right. Yeah. The frame rate just absolutely takes a nose nose dive. Uh, it's significant, especially I think the the level that we looked at fairly recently, uh, the harbor area. Yeah, harbor. That one is rough on there. Oh, but yeah. still, I think you know, with the optimizations of the engine, new techniques being introduced, uh, I think we actually might en end up with a really solid console version of Crisis mm -hmm. uh, now. And but yeah, I mean, so. Like when we actually cover this, it'll be interesting. You could look at the PC version stacked up against CryEngine 2 to really see like what has improved, what has changed. But then there's also the console version, which is a completely separate topic and just seeing how they made the cuts to get it to run there properly. And it's very exciting times in that sense. Yeah, but I, I guess beyond the visuals, there's also like sort of the gameplay to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can agree that Crisis is a great game. It has this weird reputation of being only about the visuals, but I really don't agree with that. It's an excellent sort of like open-ended stealth action experience with with a brilliant level design. But it's it's had some issues. You know, the AI is weak, I think, in those games. It's very binary. Uh, I'd like to see that improve. But I guess you and I, Alex, were kind of discussing the the suit system. I think for a console game with a controller, the Crisis 2 and 3 style, where you're sort of toggling between sort of the speed and, or not, it's like the armor mode and the stealth mode uh, makes the most sense. But I do agree that the flexibility of the original suit system is also great. I think we're going to see um, probably the integrated suit modes of binary, you switching between armor and stealth, because that's kind of what it did over an iteration of two games afterwards, and the fact that it's also going to be on consoles now. And there was the remaster that did this, too. Also, the remastered version of Crisis on consoles also unified the suit modes to be stealth and then uh, uh, armor mode, and then the power mode or strength mode would just be always on in the background when you'd run. There were some weird things about that, though. like. In Crisis 1, you could befuddle the AI by running really quickly, yeah. by switching to speed mode, running from one rock to another rock and taking cover. They would still think you're behind the other rock because you move so quickly. Uh, you really, really do move really quickly in speed mode in Crisis 1 on PC. I feel like there's no reason they couldn't implement that with the more binary system. Like I hope so. Uh, it seems absolutely feasible that you could still include that function. I really hope they would because the game's balance in Crisis 1 was kind of a lot about the suit modes and I think bringing in the the later style of uh, nano suit uh, doesn't, it would be Crisis 1 in levels and probably AI interaction to a certain degree but the way you controlled your character would feel a bit more, I don't know if the, the word to say, it would be less tactical because you're making less choices um, almost but I, I, I hope I hope I'm wrong in the end and that they do keep it more like classic Crisis, uh, but with just like less binary AI. Like there's so many times in that game where I go, um, go out of stealth in the original Crisis and all of a sudden every single AI is on me, even though it doesn't make that and much sense. This has always been a Crytek problem that yeah. um, even going back to Far Cry, <laughs> oh, gosh. where that that sort of light switch style yeah. of the enemies like you could be like a mile away and then it'll be like i'm gonna shoot you in the face <laughs> and like the whole base knows where you're at they're pinpoint accuracy from a distance yeah. but you know the thing is is the best ai in these types of games is the ai that is intentionally a little bit dumb yeah, yeah. the idea is that you want that a large gray area <laughs> where it feels like you're hiding from the enemy. And even if in reality, they would actually kind of see or detect you, like you want to make that large gray area for the player so that it's actually fun to mm -hmm. play around with the AI. It's like making them a little sandbox almost is what really makes great stealth action style AI. And that's, I mean, I, I don't really know what, I mean, what, what are we going to see here? I mean, it's not like they can just bring over the CryEngine 2 AI code necessarily. No, it runs really poorly. <laughs> exactly. It's all, it's all yeah. like single threaded or... It's Lua uh, scripts. Yeah, it's not really... Oh, that's right. It's all yeah. Lua scripts. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. See, so 
but that's fine. If they have to make changes, I really hope that it's not just well, we'll just use what we did in Crisis Two and Three. No, I hope I hope, I hope not as well. Well, they've got Homefront that they can draw upon, and I'm guessing that there's uh, probably better AI found in Hunt Showdown. The, the Hunt Showdown AI, obviously, it doesn't have many enemies that can get at you from a range, like with weapons and stuff like that. Uh, there's a couple like ranged mobs in that game, but another thing that I'm hoping for too is that they kind of there was a big difference between playing the game on Delta and any of the lower modes. Oh yeah. Uh, like, I would say up to like the easy, medium, high, or like below high, I forget what the level below Delta is, was kind of like what you were talking about, John. It was not perfect because the AI was too binary, but you could play with it a lot more yeah. uh, than many other games because of their awesome wide linear design and the suit modes. But when you'd go to Delta, uh, the game turned into a Almost, I think you could only play the game by being stealthy and making sure you're not alerting a lot of AI. Yeah, that was um, crazy. I hope they keep that dynamic where it turned into like, you, you're not the predator anymore necessarily. You're, you have to be really careful. And I really liked that in the initial game. And I hope they keep it. Also a thing that I liked from Crisis 2 and 3 is a dedicated animation for like melee kills. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. stealth kills because you go back to the original and like using that sort of functionality in the game, it feels really sloppy. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't feel great. So that could be improved there as well. And also, I'm curious about the audio mm -hmm. because I think, you know, as you've also played a lot, plenty of Hunt. Mm. Oh, and, gosh. Uh, yeah, right. The sound in that game is incredible. Yeah. Like the soundscape that they were able to craft. So, I mean, while I hope they maintain the original soundtrack, I also hope that they kind of go back and try to. Uh, reassess how the audio works. Yeah, audio has also advanced since then, and it's a real chance to. Sh I mean, they have some great people for sound. Yeah, at Crytek still. So, I would like to see that improved as well. Yeah, there's there's a lot that comes from later CryEngine games, which was done better than Crisis One. Like I I you know honor Crisis One you know in a heavy way, but Daily. Crisis Two is like uh, emergent. Like the way that the guns felt and looked when firing was way better. And also in Crisis 3 it was. And, and you have like really much better animation in Crisis 2 and 3 than in Crisis 1. Even though Crisis 1, I think for the time, had really spectacular animation. It does, yeah. Um, it's just like things have advanced in the meantime that obviously a Crisis game could do a lot better now. I have also no idea how they'll update like the face models in the game. Because the people who they based them on originally nowadays obviously look a lot different. I don't know if they'd bring them back into the studio and do face scans of the, them again, or if they would just, you know, kind of like fudge it a bit and like use like, you know, like Psycho's model from like Crisis 3. There's a lot that I wonder how they're going to actually update it. Uh, because there's, there's a lot of cinematics in the game with a lot of people emoting and talking directly to the camera, even minor characters. That was kind of one of the main things that was so impressive about it at the time. Like, and I love that introduction sequence. It's so mm -hmm. legendary. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, it's like look, you look up and you see that face, and it's just like, wow, that's insane. <laughs> it's so good. But yeah, obviously, it still holds up beautifully. But yeah. things have improved since then, so it'll be curious to see how they approach that. I was thinking though, like it would have been interesting. I, I suppose it's a little bit unfeasible for this project, the scope, but. It would have been nice to have Crisis Warhead included as well. Yeah, it's off forgotten. Uh, and it's also, it follows Crisis One's design style. Uh, also iterates it on, on it a bit because they realized that a lot of, there was a lot of criticism of the alien levels, which I still like. A lot of people don't like them. I love them. I love them. Um, but they, they iterated on that a bit. So like the aliens are a bit more dynamic. They don't just kind of like sit in one location and just come at you. They have different alien types, like with shielding aliens and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of things that kind of like happened in Crisis 1's development where I think the alien levels were not looked at as much as, you know, like the other levels because it changed over time, like games change over time. Uh, so the Alpha set. The Alpha set came Sorry, back. I just, I just had to get that in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, like Nomad also died in a comic book in between the games, you know, like that, that's unforgivable. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, there's, like, um, there's, there's a lot that, they, that they've iterated on um, since then in terms of like i really do hope warhead comes back in some sense uh, it was mainly a reskin just with new cutscenes. Yeah.
Well, Alex, I'm looking at the PR here, and it is saying that uh, Crisis Remastered will focus on the original game's single-player campaigns. Ha! Huh. With a plural. Really? There isn't more than one campaign. Yeah, that's what the PR says. What? So there isn't more than one campaign in Crisis 1. No, no, no. no. Um, not at all. So I guess that <laughs> maybe that does reference Warhead. I've just blown your mind, haven't I? Uh, yeah, so unless... There's some weird wording going on there and some mistake with the wording that does imply something else that Crisis 1 didn't have. It only has one campaign. You know, Richard, you mentioned the the sort of PR bit and the the language they use is still slightly confusing to me where it's like Cr Crisis Remastered brings new graphics features, high quality textures, and the CryEngine's native hardware and API agnostic ray tracing solution for PC, PlayStation, and for the first time, Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, it needs more commas. It needs more ellipses, you know? Uh, like, <laughs> that's all I'll say, because I really, really doubt that the Switch is going to run their API agnostic ray tracing. It's really heavy. I think they're taking that as a challenge, though, Alex. Yeah, I would like that challenge. If they, if they, sure. could, if they could some... <laughs> does it, I, even in my wildest dreams, I don't understand how that could be done. It mm -hmm. could be ray tracing, as in a single ray. <laughs> yeah, <there's>, yeah. <laughs> they didn't say anything, you know, yeah, it couldn't be that. Um, I guess at the end of the day, too, I do really hope that it is the way we're thinking it is, where it's these updated assets, that, like, like we've seen in CryEngine 5 teasers, or, you know, based upon previous work they've done, and it's not just, we took the CryEngine 3 version that was released on PS3 and Xbox 360 and gave it a new uh, slab of texture paint. That would be less than impressive. It would be good, I guess, for the history of Crisis so that we had a good version that ran really well nowadays, uh, but it would be less, be less interesting. I think the bottom line though is that we want a more modern game uh, based yeah. on a more modern engine using modern rendering techniques. And we know that Crytek have got the technology to do it. And we've got some idea of the kind of trades they're going to need to make on console because we've seen what's happened with Hunt Showdown, which turned out pretty OK, I think, on PS4 and Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of super optimistic about this. Uh, the Switch version, um, yeah, that's a bit of a question mark, isn't it? Um, but at the same time, they've got Saber Interactive who are doing it, who are extremely knowledgeable about the Switch. They've done the Witcher Complete Edition, which was pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know, bringing in an external developer, I guess that's my final point of, of discussion here. I mean, I kind of wish it was Crytek doing it. I don't know if they have the resources right now and the things like that, because they've been, you know, obviously floating along over these last few years uh, with not, you know, they closed down a number of sites and things like that. So I don't know if they have the engineering power to be such as to do such a specialized port. So here's the thing for me, though, and this is my big point of contention. I mean, this is great and all that it's coming to the current consoles, but I feel like the impact would have been so much greater if this had shown up at launch of the new consoles and on PC with full ray tracing features and like all sorts of advanced you know techniques implemented into this remastered version mm -hmm. like you know because people go nuts buying just about anything at the launch of a new console and having something like crisis would actually be kind of amazing and it's a great way to kick off the generation so it's it's a little bit odd to me that they're sort of like, like, oh yeah, this console generation's almost over, so here's Crisis. I think it would have been good for them to like sitting on the Sony stage and or like the Microsoft stage that would have would have been E3 and be like, but can the Xbox Series X or PS5 run Crisis? And then they show this, you know? Uh, that would have been really good. Uh, they missed that opportunity. I think they just want to make money. I think that's <laughs> yeah. the bottom line. They, you know, if, if you're going to reintroduce Crisis as a franchise, and I really do hope that this opens the door to further uh, crisis yeah. games, then you've got to start with your big hitter and you've got to get to as many people as yeah. possible. And that's kind of what they're going to be doing here. And I think, I think the, uh, the, the door is open to doing a next-gen version. Crytek went through a difficult period. Uh, they opened up all those studios. Things didn't go that well with development. There was the whole CryCash thing, <laughs> uh, which Alex is heavily invested in. Um, <laughs> but there's been some dark days for Crytek since the Crisis games, and with Hunt Showdown being a phenomenal game, and you know the reemergence of Crisis, like it does give me some hope, perhaps that they're sort of rebuilding the studio and trying to get back to what made uh, them great. So hopefully this actually leads to a full-on new Crisis yeah. experience from Crytek. And so say we all.
Okay, well, I guess we're going to round that off then. Uh, many thanks for joining me on this one, guys. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure. Not as much of a pleasure as actually experiencing the, the re-reveal of a Crisis game yesterday, but holy crap, this is awesome stuff, right? <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, <laughs> well, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Ring the bell, uh, the bell, ring it for instant notifications whenever we post new, new Digital Foundry content. And uh, yes, the DF Patreon, if you want to see this video for some reason at extreme quality, <laughs> then uh, that's for you. Uh, but that's all from us for now. Happy days are coming. Thanks for watching. <laughs>